One of the greatest truths of the AI age is that we live in a power law world and most of us don't realize it yet. I'm going to explain what that means. If you are living in any kind of traditional working world, your entire working universe is defined by averages. You are defined relative to your promotability by the 50th percentile performance for your particular job role. Your software competes in the market pit place traditionally based on whether or not it's better than average and is a better fit for the customer need than an average or replacement level fit. That is literally what the entire concept of buying committees in B2B software is all about. It's finding the fit that is best given a narrow distribution of use cases. We don't live in that world anymore. We don't. We don't live in it for talent. We don't live in it for building. We don't live in it for distribution. We don't live in it for marketing. We don't live in it for business. And increasingly in our personal lives, we don't live in it. But we don't really think it through. We aren't used to it. Our brains are not processing nonlinearity well. What do I mean by that? I mean that people come up on stage in San Francisco and they say, we're going to have a country of geniuses that lives in a data center by late 2027. Most of us have no idea what that means. And if we do have a sense of what that means, we don't know how it changes our world. And we can't compute the idea that the progress or pace of change might be that great between now and the end of next year or the end of two years from now. It's like 16 months from now, no way. We can't, no, that's not happening. What if it does? Regardless of whether it happens in 2027 or 2028 or 2030, the point is not exactly when the date is. The point is that we live in an exponential world. We live in a power law world. Let me give you some examples of what that looks like. In a power law world, the top 1% of performers in a job family will get disproportionate rewards, ridiculously disproportionate. Like Mark Zuckerberg calls you up and offers you $100 million rewards. By the way, that really happened. That's actually happening now, right? Like you can see in the world that we live in today, job families are not getting rewarded according to any kind of normal distribution, according to any kind of law of averages. This is a power law world where the top 1% are reaping disproportionate rewards. And I'm not talking about Wall Street here. I'm talking about talent performers in the workplace, product managers, engineers, even executives who can lead technical teams. They are getting rewarded based on extraordinary ability. People who are sort of the new average is 90th percentile, right? People who are below 90th percentile, roughly speaking, end up feeling below average because of the disproportionate rewards that accrue to the top 10%. This is true for builders too. If you're an individual who is building a project, I hear this all the time. I guarantee you someone is building your project and I don't care. I don't care. The world is a big place. There's like 8 billion of us. Someone is building your special project. I don't care. I care if your project actually works, if I can use it, and if it solves a problem for me. And if it does, and if you can communicate that in a way that I can understand, well, you have a chance in the marketplace. There's a power law world for product distribution too. If you are in the 1% of product distribution as a founder or a builder, if you're Peter Levels, right? that very famous solo founder and, and vibe coder, he can vibe code something over a weekend and he can immediately make a lot of money on it. And it's not that he's cheating at the game, it's that the game reinforces top performers. It's that the game is wired so that AI reinforces tiny disparities in skill sets and exaggerates them. If you prompt just a little bit better than the person sitting next to you, you are going to get significantly more work done because you actually have AI as an accelerator and accelerating AI in a slightly more correct direction makes a big, big difference. And that difference is growing over time because the models that are powering you are getting better all the time. We are stacking power curves here. People don't think about it that way. I promise you, they don't think about their products that way. They don't think about the idea that there will be disproportionate value accruing to a product that leverages AI correctly, that is distributed correctly, that has the right product evolution for where the market is going and where the market's needs are with AI, and that those kinds of products have the chance to be overnight breakout successes in a way that we haven't seen before. If you wanna know why Lovable is the fastest company to reach 100, that's why. They figured out the intersection between traditional software and AI in a use case that unlocked a whole new generation of builders 
And ta-da, $100 million later, in just a few months, they're off to the races. The world is a power law world, and AI is making it more and more and more of a power law steep curve. We are not going back to the old world. We are not going back to the world of averages. If I can give one piece of career advice to you, it is believe that you are in a power law world and act accordingly. Plan your strategy accordingly. And by the way, if you think I'm not in the top 1%, this is so disempowering, you have to realize in a power law world, moving up gives you disproportionate rewards wherever you are on the curve. And so if you move from a 40th percentile performer to a 70th percentile performer, you get much more than 30 percentage points in gain there. You're actually moving steeper up the curve. Ditto if you move from 90 to 95%. Do the rewards get greater as you get closer and closer to the peak of your profession? Yes. Is it also true? This is not always popular, but it's true. It is also true that you get rewards for just sticking with a subject and being persistent with it. People think that moving to the top of the skill chart is something that requires tremendous luck and living in San Francisco and everything else. Look, there's some luck, there's some San Francisco connections, but a lot of it is time on station. It is time focused and obsessed over your subject that you care about, that you wanna become one of the best in the world at, and just caring about that. There are plenty of people who work at Anthropic, who work at an OpenAI, who will tell you they did not go to school for this. They obsessed over it. And so it is actually easier than you think to move along this curve. It is a function of your willingness to put time and passion in. And as you put time and passion in, you are going to discover connections. Those connections are gonna to start to become networks. They're gonna give you options as far as where you wanna be in the world. And you are gonna get chances to connect with companies and products that you didn't think were possible. But it's a function of singular obsession with a particular power curve that you wanna drive. So do you wanna ride the product management power curve? Do you wanna ride the engineering power curve? And those are big, broad ones. Like you can get very fine grained. And I actually think, just like I would recommend a startup focus on a specific problem, focus on a specific power curve you want to drive in your career as a builder. If you're trying to find a product niche, it's the same thing. You are basically looking for a niche in the world where you can compete to be in the top 1%. It is, it is like a universal rule. It is how the world works now. And AI is exacerbating that. AI is pushing that forward. AI is driving it faster. It will be more of a power law world next year than it was this year. So if you think it's hard now, well, one, you can control that to some extent, and two, it'll be harder next year, so maybe start to take it seriously this year. Does that make sense? Power laws are here to stay. You can't control that. AI is here to stay. That's not going anywhere, but you can decide where on that power curve you wanna be to a much greater extent than you might realize, and that is a fractal insight. It's an insight for companies. It's an insight for individuals. It's an insight for teams. It's an insight for products. Everything is running on a power curve. And if we have in our heads that we live in a world of averages, we're not going to be competing and we're going to end up way, way, way below where we should be in that power law world. We're going to be in the bottom 40 percent or whatever and just not achieve the results we want. And if you think about the big headlines that happen about why AI didn't get adopted by this company or, or why this strategy failed with AI, so often if you dig the mindset and the culture of the organization that was doing this change or the even if you're sitting around, you're getting a drink with someone and they're frustrated because of sort of the way AI is changing their job family. If, if you peel that too, if you, if you dig into that insight, what you see is that people aren't getting to grips with the fundamental exponential nature of the problem space now. And if they did, they would think about the problem space differently. Now, I'm not here to tell you that if you're talking with your friend over drinks and there are two drinks in and they're complaining about their job, and you say, it's a power law world, Nate said so, they're not gonna throw a beer in your face. They probably will, which would be justified. But it's still true, and there are probably gentler ways to put it. You know, you can say something like, hey, I know that we don't have guarantees now. I know the world has changed, but let's take a minute and let's think through what our options are now that we understand how power laws work. And they might still throw a beer in your face, but it's still true. So power laws are a thing, there is insight here for companies. There's insight here for teams. There's insight here for individuals, if you're willing to hear it. It is one of the things that I find people often do throw metaphorical beers at me for, but I gotta be honest with you, that is what is actually happening. And so if you want to drive your career, your product, your team, whatever, 
that's what you need to do. You need to look at the world as a power law world, and you need to look at investing in specific curves and writing those curves. Cheers.